Hallelujah. I'm going to be starting out today talking about rejection is God's protection. Rejection is God's protection. Oftentimes, it is God's protection. What are you talking about, Pastor Jay? Rejection is God's protection. Let's look at it from the scriptural standpoint and let's look at it from the biblical standpoint. Let's start out first with the first place where rejection sometimes can be detrimental to us. If we're not spiritual, if we don't have any understanding, if we are unlearned, that's why the Bible is so important for us to get an understanding and to be taught the word of God. Let's look at Jesus. In John chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. John chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. John chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. Verse 10, it says, <clears throat> He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Uh, if you remember in the scripture, if you remember in the Bible, if you remember uh, uh, where it talks about the very purpose of Jesus coming into the world, he came into the world, of course, to redeem all of mankind. And we have to know that Jesus, although he was born uh, of the Virgin Mary, that that wasn't the beginning of his existence. Jesus always was. Father, Son, Holy Spirit always were. The Trinity, uh, those that, that that's why it says when in the beginning, when they were making Adam, it says, let us make man. Let us make man in our own image. Us depicts plural. I mean, there, there's more than one. There, I mean, God is one, but there's Holy Spirit, Father, and Son. These three are one. If you look in uh, the book of John, it says that. And so here Jesus is, here Jesus is in the world and it says that he came into a world which he created and everything in it and the world knew him not. Can you imagine the very things that you created, the very people who you breathe life into, the very reason for their existence? You are the author of that and they don't even know or recognize you as such. Can you imagine walking into a, a, a just say there's a place where you provided for a family, you provided a home for them and you you made sure that uh, after their lives were destroyed, that they got a second chance and everything. And it's not that you were looking for anything, any pat on the back, but just some sort of recognition for what it was that you did. He said he came into this world and the world knew him not. Not that he was looking for that, because it says when he came into this world, he made himself of no reputation. He really wasn't looking for that, so to speak, in that sense. He wanted people to recognize him as Lord and Savior. But as many as received him, excuse me, in verse 10, he came unto his own and his own received him not. You know that he came to the Jews, right? That that that, that was the that was the plan, that, that he was the here to to reconcile the Jews back unto himself. And the Jews, instead of instead of allowing him to be received and be sent into the temple, this goes into prophecy. They wanted him, he wanted his seat in the temple. They did not, they rejected him. In fact, when it was time to release him or re release uh, Barabbas, they said, No, release Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Isn't it funny that though just the week before, the same people who were yelling Hosanna, the same people who were cheering as, his, as he entered in on the donkey, within the next week were saying crucify him. If there's anybody that can understand and feel what it feels or understand what it feels like to be rejected by your own, it's Jesus Christ himself. So we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was tempted at all points as we are yet without sin. He was rejected. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Let's take it a little bit further. 
Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. It's on your screen there. The notes are mine in blue. Matthew 13, 54. And when he was coming to his own country, there it goes again, on my, on my own country, he taught them there in their synagogue. He taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? They were astonished. Why were they astonished? Scripture goes on. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren called James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not with us all? Are they not all with us? Whence hath this man these things? And they were offended in him. And said unto Jesus, a prophet is not, and, 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 G, and, and Jesus said unto them, excuse me, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. They recognized commonality with Jesus. That was a part of the reason why they rejected him was because they were familiar with Jesus. Hold up. Didn't I go to school with him? Didn't I go to school with her? Isn't she my little cousin? I used to clean your diapers. You know what? Isn't he, isn't he just a little bit too young to be talking about all these these wisdom things? And he talked about all the thus saith the Lord and what the Bible said. Didn't she used to deal in this particular uh, uh, lifestyle? Didn't he used to go to the club? Didn't he? Didn't, didn't I see him? And then he walked down the street. All of these things result in commonality, which causes people to reject you because they are not seeing God, they're seeing you in your former state. They're seeing you in the commonality of life. God can use anybody. He used the donkey, but sometimes what happens is people get wrapped up. Sometimes kids won't even listen to their own parents because it's their parents, and yet, and still God is using them to speak into them life in that more abundantly. God is using them to speak life. Sometimes God will use children and the mom and parents or, or the people around or the people who are elders to say, ah, that boy, he, you know, he, he talking this, uh, you know, who he think he is. And I, I remember I used to clean your diapers and I used to do. And so God's word is indiscriminate. God will use any vessel that he would use, a willing vessel to speak to us. Here is Jesus himself and his own is rejecting him. And there, they said it twice. It says, where did this wisdom come from? Where did these wise sayings come from? And so they're denoting that they're thinking that Jesus is the, the word itself is the wisdom. When I teach the word of God, it's not that I'm wise in my own self. People will say, boy, you know, you can teach a boy, you know, you got some wisdom on you. No, it's God got the wisdom. It's God has the power. I'm only a parent. I, as a disciple, we're parrots. We're repeating what God says. And because what God says has power, his word has power, we're perceived as something more than what we are. Extraordinary God, ordinary man. God will use ordinary man every time. But sometimes the stumbling block to people receiving from God is our own flesh. Sometimes the very people around us will be the ones who reject what God is saying through us the most. And they were offended, verse 57. They were offended in him. You think sometimes that it's you. No, they were offended in him. You're speaking his words. They're offended in him. Jesus said, he who, he, 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 he if you, if you would, if you would identify yourself and my words. People identify with being a Christian, but when you identify with the words of Jesus, when you start quoting the words of Jesus, when you start teaching what Jesus said, that's when the offenses come. People will reject you for what you believe. People will reject you for what you state from the word of God. But notice what it says. A prophet is not without honor and Save in his own country in his own country. In other words, Jesus could go anywhere. Sometimes you could speak to anybody. You could you could minister to complete strangers and they'll receive more than the very people who have been around you your whole life. 
You can minister to people for years and it's like it falls on deaf ears. You can talk to somebody that you just met last week and they'll receive the word of God quicker than the people who are right around you every day. That's what Jesus is talking about. But it's not for us to get discouraged. I'm here to tell you that rejection is God's protection. Even with family and relatives, there's this thing about relatives that we think that we have this thing called loyalty. No, we're going to see in the scripture where Jesus puts it right where it needs to be. We're going to look at that in the scripture. There's no loyalty except for God, except to God. Notice when it says something that is very, very profound and very, very scary. It says that, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Sometimes people's breakthrough, sometimes people's deliverance, sometimes people's healing is wrapped up in what they receive from what it is that God gave you. And in rejecting you, they're rejecting the very provision that God meant for them. They're rejecting the very healing that God meant for them. It didn't say that Jesus couldn't do many mighty works because he was powerless. No, it says Jesus couldn't do many mighty works because of their unbelief. They couldn't get past the fact that they knew Jesus as a boy, as a baby. They couldn't get past that. He was familiar to them. So as a result, their rejection of him, their rejection of you results in them not getting the breakthrough that they need in their life. They're praying for something that they don't even realize that the very thing that they're praying for comes through the fact that God wants to use you to administer it. And they reject you. They reject the blessing. They don't even realize that they're casting you off and casting their very deliverance off at the same time. Matthew 12, 46, Matthew 12, 46. Matthew 12, 46. Look at what it says. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. He was ministering. He, 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 he was in the temple and his, 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 his mother and his brothers were standing outside. They, they were, they were desiring to speak with him. It is as if he was ministering inside of the church and the mother and the brothers are on the outside waiting to talk to Jesus. They're, they're waiting for an opportunity to get to, to, to speak to him. Then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak to thee. And so they, 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 they basically, they came up front. They held up the one finger and they walked through the crowd and they said, oh, Jesus, uh, you know how they talk, whisper while you're ministering. Your mother and your brother, you know, they're waiting outside. Your brethren are, are, are waiting outside. But he answered and said unto them that told him and he didn't make it private. He didn't say, well, discreetly, well, tell him I'm ministering. Well, tell him. I'm. No, he said to the entire congregation, he used it as a teaching point. He said unto them, who is my mother? And who are my brethren? In other words, I know that they're related to me, but are they family? Everybody that's related to you ain't family and everybody that's family ain't necessarily related to you. It's not about a bloodline in the physical. It's about a bloodline in the spirit. You better catch this. Sometimes people are holding on to bloodlines in the natural to their own detriment because God says, I'm trying to sever those ties and get you connected to some spiritual family. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brother. He said, these are the people who I identify as with family. These are the people who I identify with. Bump who came, who I, who I came from. Bump who cousin them is and who auntie them is and who mama them is and who daddy them is. Bump all of that. Who is my brother? Who is tied to the Lord? That's who my mother and my brethren did. For whosoever shall do the world, uh -oh, not whosoever shall call themselves a Christian, not whosoever shall, shall have a Bible on their nightstand, not so whosoever shall go to church every Sunday, not whosoever got a church attendance out of this world, bump all of that. It says, for whosoever shall do the will of the Father which is in heaven. If they're not doing the will of the Father, if you don't see them ministering, if you don't see them in the word of God, if you don't see them worshiping God, if you don't see them actively proclaiming the gospel, if you don't see them actively doing the work of the evangelists as we are the, to do, he said, don't recognize them as brethren. Who are you calling brethren that ain't brethren or people who just call themselves Christian? Are you going to call somebody a vehicle and try to jump inside of them just because they standing in a garage? 
I'm a car. I'm pretty sure if you get on their back, they're not going to take you the same way a Mustang would or a Honda Accord would. They're not going to do it because a closer inspection, just because you call yourself something, does not make you it. Jesus makes a clear distinction, whosoever shall do the will of the Father, which is in heaven. So what Jesus was saying was, I will reject those, willingly reject those and accept the rejection from those who call themselves relative, who call themselves close to me, who are not doing the will of the Father because we got work to do. Let's look at what it says. Matthew 10, Matthew 10, verse 36, Matthew 10, verse 36. I want you to know that if Jesus had said that today in most churches, people would be offended. Boy, that's your mama. Boy, that's that's your daddy. Boy, that's your cousin. And boy, that's your brother. Why? How you gonna say that in front of yet? Jesus said it in front of a whole congregation. He was teaching a principle. We got this thing about well, you can't say that, and you know you got to sugarcoat it. No, Jesus called it like an I S is. Notice what he says. He goes a little bit further in Matthew ten. Verse 36, Matthew 10, verse 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. What does it mean to place someone before God? He that loveth father or mother more than me. That means that if God says something and mama and them, a dad and them, a brother, a sister, a cousin, an auntie and them say something else, I got to choose to follow after Christ. That means when they try to get me to be loyal to them versus loyal to God, I got to shake the dust off of my feet and make and allow you to be offended so that God is not offended. That's why if you sometimes people want to just walk away and they don't want to necessarily live the way that you're living or, or condone what it is that you're doing for Christ, you have to allow them to, to reject that their rejection is God's protection. Some people have resurrected characters in the movie that God has placed them in. We're all in a movie with God being the great director and God is saying, there are some characters in your movie that I wanted to die off, but you keep resurrecting the character. Why are you resurrecting the character? Because they're related to you. Why are you resurrecting the character? Because they have some type of connection to you. Jesus said the only connection that matters is the connection that we have through the Holy Ghost. It's the family of God or it's nothing. These are the nature, these are the relationships that we should be focused on nurturing. Yes, do we minister to people? Absolutely. But we have to develop thick skin. We have to develop, a, 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 may the Lord watch between me and thee mentality when people decide to walk away. I've been so empowered by this because now I don't look at family the same way. I look at the family the way that Jesus looks at family. I look at it in the same line that the Bible teaches. There's freedom in that. There's so many people shackled and put in bondage by the very fact that they feel like they have this loyalty, this some type of debt to pay to the people who they came from or the people who they're related to. The devil is a lie. I ain't got no loyalty to anybody according to the word of God. Now, the people can get in their feelings and their emotions. I got no loyalty to anybody except what it says in the word of God. So you ought to rejoice when God starts subtracting people from your lives. Our loyalty has to be to God alone and not be affected by those who reject and walk away from us. That's freedom. That's complete. That's 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 true freedom. That that's the freedom in God. That's the freedom in Christ when those people reject us. Rejection is God's protection. 
there are sometimes God will cause people to walk away. And we're saying, why are you walking away? Why are you going and stop crying? Wipe the snot off your nose and say, thank you, Jesus. You separated. The world, the world, the world is the next thing that 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 sometimes we if we're attached to it the rejection from the world can hurt uh, uh, uh John chapter 15 John chapter 15 verse 16 John chapter 15 verse 16 I love what Jesus says right here, and I talked about this in times past, but it bears repeating because it goes along with the verse and it goes along by the reason of the rejection. We have to realize the root of the rejection is Jesus. And it says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name. I, he may give it to you. Ye have not chosen me. Uh, and uh, we would love to think that, you know, this idea to serve Jesus, this idea to give our lives to the Lord originated in us. But we see here that that's not the truth, that Jesus said that ye have not chosen me. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Beautiful song, but according to this scripture right here, not true. He have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. Now, yes, we make the decision, but the decision didn't originate in us. He said, but with loving kindness have I drawn them. So if you think of yourself as something of sort of like a magnet, and there's something in God that draws us to him, that causes us. This is so deep for some people. Some people don't like to talk about predestination and how God already had a plan before the foundation of the world. Jesus told, the Bible says in Jeremiah, it says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, before you got here, before your mama met your daddy, I knew you. I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. God's mind was already made up before Jeremiah said, when? If we can conceptualize that before you took your first breath, God had already chosen you. I know this is too deep for somebody. Sometimes when we think about this, it's overwhelming. But look at what the word of God says, not what I'm saying. Ye have not chosen me. You did not choose Jesus, but Jesus chose you. That's what adoption is. If you look at the scriptures, when it talks about the spirit of adoption, I, he, he adopted us. He, he selected us. He chose us. My God. Verse 17. These things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. The world hate you. The world reject you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Now, I'm not talking about in terms of ministry. Because there are oftentimes the, the people who are possessed full of demons are the ones who are drawn to us because they're craving deliverance. This type of love I'm talking about is a type of love that they love hanging out with you because you look so much, talk so much, act so much like them. If the world loves you, examine your relationship with Jesus. The farther you are away from him, the more the world will want to hang out with you. The closer you are to him, the more rejection you will experience. Oh, you got to be glad when people reject you. You got to be glad when people can easily get offended and walk away from you. It's because you're so close to him. You ought to get excited. You know what? I'm, I'm making some people teed off today. They're walking away from me. They're cutting me off. One moment, they're all happy in their emotions. But you got to remember the, so, the parable of the seed and the sower. The parable of the seed and the sower, it says that when the word was sown, immediately they, they received it with gladness. Immediately they received it with gladness. They received the word of God with gladness. They were happy when they, that when they saw you come in. They were so happy. 
They were so glad when they seen you coming. They so happy because you make them feel good. But it says when immediately something happens, tribulation, something happens for the word's sake, they're offended immediately. So in other words, you can be ministering to someone today and they'll be yelling Hosanna, but as soon as something happens that they're not ready for, their immaturity will show up and they'll be yelling crucify. They'll be cutting you off. They don't want to talk to you no more. They don't want to hang out and fellowship with you with you no more. This is what I'm talking about. The rejection of the world. We have to examine our relationship with Jesus. There's people who don't call me like they would call me before. There's people who don't want to don't want to be around me like they I, I don't take any offense to it. I'm glad because I know it's because of my walk with the Lord. I know it's because of who I am in Christ. Remember the word that I said to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Why are we so shocked and so hurt when people persecute us? When people say nasty things about us, when people talk about us behind our back like a junkyard dog, when, when people treat us differently. The Bible is talking about the same thing with the parable of the seed and the soul. It said they received the word with gladness. They were so happy in the beginning and now they just turn up their nose at you. It's because they're emotional. They're like the wave of the sea. And we have to remember and guard ourselves spiritually to brace ourselves for that rejection. Jesus said, be prepared because it's coming. He said, if the world hated me, it's going to hate you. So in other words, I'm preparing you. You have to prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You have to prepare yourself in life because rejection is coming. There are some people who are around you today, smiling in your face, that two years from now will hate your guts. There are some people that you met last month that are just so happy, and they just, oh my goodness, she the best thing, he the best thing since sliced bread. And the next month, they're going to be yelling, crucify him. That's what happened to Jesus. Hosanna! Oh, they got the palm tree. Hosanna! Next week, crucify him. Let Barabbas go. I'm telling you. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 42. John chapter 8, verse 42. John chapter 8, verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. This is the this is the end all verse right here that that squashes every other religion. You cannot proclaim that Bahama is God, Muhammad is God. You can't say Buddha or or, or or whatever religion that they serve. You can I don't care if it's the Hebrew Israel. I don't care. You cannot say that that is your God and reject Jesus. You cannot say that that is God and Jesus be a prophet or an angel or anything else other than God himself. He says, if ye were of your, if he were your father, if God were your father, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. So in other words, we evaluate who is God in people's lives based upon who Jesus is. There's no separation. There's no, well, we all serve the same God. The devil is a lie. If God were your father, these are the words from Jesus. Jesus, Jesus this is the truth. If God were your father, you would love me. So they can't say, I, I love God, but I put Jesus in a box. Or I love God, but he's not God. And he, uh, you know, but Jesus isn't God. No, 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 no. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. There are people who can't hear the word of the Lord. You got to recognize that people can't hear the word of the Lord. They're deaf. They're blind. They don't understand. Ye are of your father, the devil. What? You mean we ain't all God's children? I heard that before. We all God's children. No, we're all God's creation, but God, God is not father to everybody. 
This is the scripture right here. Let, let's get Bible. Let, let, all, all that makes people all feel warm and cuddly and it makes people feel all nice and fuzzy. And some people won't say this from the pulpit because they don't want to offend folk, but it's not about offending folk. Uh, uh, it's not about uh, 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 sugarcoating things just to gain a crowd. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. I come to separate something. So ye are of your father, the devil. So you mean that the devil got children? Sure do. That's what this scripture said. This isn't, didn't, this isn't a, an opinion. This isn't a, a, a footnote. This is the word of God coming from the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself. He says to these people, ye are of your father, the devil, if you don't have me. So there are some people who are the devil's kids. And the lust of your father ye will do. He said the lust of your father ye will do. Watch your actions. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Not, not some truth, no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. That's why people reject the truth because they, they're, they have their father's spirit. You wonder, why won't they listen to me? It's because their father is the devil. They, they can't hear. We have to pray that they would be born again so that they can get spiritual ears. That's why Jesus said, he who has an ear, let him hear. He wasn't talking about the two ears on the side of your head. Everybody got those. He who has an ear, let him hear. He was talking about the spirit. That's why there are some people, they'll reject the word of God that you're speaking to them. They don't have spiritual ears. They're not born again. Their father is the devil. So in other words, it's like when we're speaking Christian, when we're speaking Bible, when we're speaking the word of God, it put it in the context of someone being from the United States and speaking English. When they hear you and they're of the devil, they hear Russian. They hear vodka, vodka, and they're like, what are you saying? I don't understand what you're saying. You don't make no sense. I can't understand what you're saying to me because it don't make no sense. And I don't believe that. Okay, because you are your father, the devil. That's why it don't make sense. It wasn't meant to make sense. It ain't going to make sense until you be born again. And then you receive the ears that God would have you to hear, the spiritual ears. Which of you convinces me of sin? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. He that is of God, I'm repeating that, heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. There is your in all. If you're talking to people, if you're posting stuff on social media, if you're having conversations, family, friend, and they don't hear it, ye hear them not because ye are not of God. You're speaking English and they hear Russian. Jesus did not mince words and spoke with the tr spoke the truth. People today omit their relationship with God to save their relationship or suppress who they are and what they believe to avoid rejection. Not really going to tell you what I believe because if I told you how I really feel, if I told you what I really thought, and I'm not talking about in the sake of ministry, you just can't lay everything out there uh, at the beginning, but I'm talking about the close relationships of the, of the people who, who deem you close to them, who, who want to be around. If they don't know where you stand, there's something wrong with that. I can't compromise who I am in Christ. There are people who love me, but they know where I stand as it comes to the word of God. There are people who care about me, but they know where I stand when it comes to my Jesus. The world will reject us. The world will reject us. Just have to get played. Just have to be ready for it. Just brace yourself. But there's, there's protection in rejection. Let's look at Psalms 32. Psalm 32, verse 7. Talking about your hiding place. There's a hiding place. So uh, the protection, what do, you, what do you mean by protection? God's rejection is our protection because it doesn't feel good. When people talk about me, it doesn't feel good to be cut off. But we have to remember that God didn't, uh, that God didn't sever our emotions. We have to remember we're a three-part being. The Bible says that we're a spirit being. That's the part that's born again when we receive Christ. 
uh, but we have a soul and a body. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. Now, our recreated spirit is perfect, but our soul isn't. That's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, why would I have to renew my mind if the Bible says that all things have become new when I receive Christ? Because all things in your spirit have become new, but our soul, our mind, our will and emotions are not perfect. So we have to renew our mind with the word of God so that we can bring them in alignment and bring them under subjection to what the word of God says and what we know to be true in our spirit. Why is this important? Because there's going to come times where your Feelings are not going to be in alignment with what the Spirit of God is saying or has already concluded. What do I mean by that? People can hurt your feelings. People have the ability to be able to hurt your feelings. God is not going to sever us from the feeling of rejection, but he says, don't be led by your feelings, be led by the Spirit. So I can't allow myself to while I'm feeling a particular way to allow my feelings to get behind the wheel and drive me to make a decision that is not according to the word of God. That means I'm going to compromise. You know what? I know that person was rejected because of what I said. And you know what? I'm just going to compromise. I'm just going to be what they want me to be because I like their company and I'm just going to no. I got to allow my I got to be led by the spirit because at the end of the day, Jesus is going to hold me accountable for what I do and what I don't do. So I have to be careful with that. So now my hiding place, what are you talking about? My hiding place. Thou art my hiding place. Psalm 32, 7, Psalm 32, 7. And we know that the other part of the man is the flesh that has to be crucified daily. Spirit being born again, mind, will, and emotion. We have to renew our mind with the, with, with, with the word of God. That's why Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus had a will. He was born of a man. I mean, he was born of God, right? But he was still 100% man, 100% God. People think, well, he was God. He didn't go through everything. Yeah, he went through everything we went through yet without sin. So in other words, we have a will. We could say, okay, this is what I see God's will is for my life, but I have my own free will, my own choice, and I can go this way, but I choose to go the other way. That doesn't always feel good. <clears throat> and then lastly, crucifying the flesh. Paul says, I die daily. I die daily. There are some things that this flesh wants to do that the spirit man is like, uh-uh, Holy Spirit is like, don't do that. To crucify the flesh doesn't feel good. That's why it's called crucifixion. Crucifixion doesn't feel good. That means when I have a fleshly desire and I deny my flesh the self-gratification that feels good when I do it, I'm crucifying the flesh. That's why when I want to say something to somebody or I want to do something or whatnot, I have to crucify the flesh. I have to bite my tongue. I have to, I have to curb my actions. That's what it talks. Of. That's what it's talking about when it's talking about crucifying the flesh. You have to go through all of these range of emotions and feelings when dealing with rejection. There's sometimes the, the tendency to want to tell people off. There's sometimes the tendency to want to cave and to cower to whatever it is that they want you to do. There's sometimes the, 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 the caving or the thing to be able to just slander them back when they're slandering you. All of these range of emotions have to deal with us crucifying the flesh, renewing our mind and being in subjection to the spirit. Our hiding places in God. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt, watch this, preserve me from trouble. Preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about. That means hedge me about with songs of deliverance. Notice what it says in the book of Job. If you go back in the book of Job, this is a little homework. You go back and you read chapter one, chapter two of the book of Job. People think that the enemy just has this unbridled authority in people's lives. There, yes, there are some things that the devil does, but it's only because God allows it. Notice in the book of Job where God wanted, uh, uh, Job brought, brought up Job as he, he, you know, he's a man after, basically he's, he's an upright man and everything. And, have, and then God says, have you considered my servant Job? Because he, the enemy came before him and he bragged on Job in front of the enemy. And the, and the enemy says, basically paraphrasing, well, he's not praising you for nothing. 
She's not going to church for nothing. She, she's not worshiping you for nothing. She's not opening your Bible. He's not opening his Bible for nothing. He's not telling people about you for nothing. There's something up his sleeve. He's only doing it because you've protected him. There's a hedge about him. But he says, as soon as you take some of those things away, he will curse you to your faith. So the test wasn't about what Job had because the devil didn't want what Job had. The devil doesn't drive a vehicle. The devil doesn't live in a home. He's a spirit, but he knows if those things are attached to your praise to God. He wants to mess with those things. God gives him authority to do that, but he gives him limits. And so those the, the authority for, for him and the limits that he gives is ultimately to give God the glory. Job didn't curse God when he was afflicted. He gave praise to God. He says, naked I came in this world, naked I came out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So why did I talk about that when I'm preferring to the hiding place? The hiding place is God's hedge. God did not stop bringing hedges of protection with Job. We have hedges of protection. That's why there are certain things in our lives that affect other people. We see things happening in the world that affect other people that don't come near us. Psalm 91, a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked. So there's a hiding place in him, but that protection is when we stay in his will. The temptation is to chase out the relationships, to enter into other covenants with people for the sake of saving the relationship. And in a sense, we remove ourselves from God's perfect will from our lives. The hiding place is staying smack dab in the middle of his will. If God cuts off a relationship, if God severs something from you, if God takes someone out of your life, don't you dare going trying to resurrect it. I don't care if it's related to you. I don't care the title of the person. I don't care grandma, mama, auntie, daddy, cousin, nephew. I don't care who it is. Best friend from high school. A, a, a homeboy from back in the way. Don't you go resurrecting something that God meant to die because of the protection that God, God is saying, I allowed that person to walk away. I allowed that person to reject you because I want you protected. There's some things that are attached to that person that you don't even see going to be an effect in your life. There's some things that are, that are attached to that person that could mean your death. People don't think like that. People don't think that the very person that they get in the car with could be the very coffin that they end up being and that be the last time anyone ever hears a seeds from you. All it is is it takes us as a car ride. All it takes is one visit. All it takes is some time spent. We don't think in those terms, but the enemy sure does. And God is saying, no, I'm subtracting these people. I'm allowing you to be rejected by the world, to be rejected by these people so that I can keep you safe in this hiding place. There's safety when they don't invite you to the parties. There's safety when they say, I got a baby shower, but I ain't inviting her because she's a holy roller. Uh, there's safety when he don't call you back no more. There's safety when she loses your number. There's safety. Safety. Second Thessalonians. Verses three and three. Second Thessalonians three, verse three. Second Thessalonians three, verses three. Verse three. But the Lord is faithful. I got to stop right there. Do you know how faithful the Lord is? See, we, we, we sometimes, and it hurts sometimes when people start acting differently towards us. But we ought to rejoice because that's a part of God's protection. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? Do you not know that sometimes that rejection is God keeping you from evil? And what we're saying in our tears and our snot is like, no, Lord, I want the evil. I want him to come back to me. I want him to be in my life. I want him to be. And it's like, no, God is like, no. You're just going to have to deal with that person, treat you that way. You're just going to have to deal with that person, not inviting you around no more. You're just going to have to deal with the world, not wanting you there because I'm protecting you. I am protecting you. The Bible says that few there be that find the road that leads 
unto righteousness that leads unto eternal life. And many there be that go by the road that leads to destruction. That ought to let you know that the people who truly love God, the people who Jesus was talking about, who is my mother and my brethren, are going to be few. We have to recognize and tune ourselves up to understand that this walk with Jesus may not be a popular one. We may not have four or five hundred friends. We may not have ten friends. We may not have two or three good friends that we can count on one finger. But if you count or two fingers or three fingers, but if you do the math and you understand that, because, but, but while Jesus has already spoken to us, that's how it's supposed to be. But in that is protection. The Lord is faithful. How many people put yourself in the parent role? Some of you are parents now, young children. Some of you've had young children before. Put yourself in the framework. This auntie, grandma, put yourself in the, in the role of a parent and imagine that there were some children that were just wicked. They were just wicked. I don't care. They two and three years old, but they already selling drugs. They already popping pills. How many of you would keep them, allow them to keep coming to your house and hanging around your children? How many of you, no matter how much tears and snot your kids cry, mama, that's my friend. I don't care who she is. I don't care who they is. You're going to do the separating because you love them. And see, the part that, that is difficult is the part of the child that doesn't understand because his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So oftentimes when God is doing the separating, he doesn't give us insight as to why he's allowing or causing the rejection to happen. But he's faithful. And so in the same way that you would look at that child and say, I don't care, you're not hanging around them. I don't care if you got two friends when you could have 50. I don't care if your birthday party has just got me, you, and your daddy. I wouldn't care who it is. I'm not going to allow you to be contaminated with evil. I'm not going to allow you to be subjected because last time so-and-so got in a car with this person and that person and they got killed. I'm not going to allow that to happen to you. And because I'm God. This is God. Because I'm God and I see all and I know all and I'm I'm sovereign. I will cause some people to even act different towards you. I will even cause people to manifest who they really are, that they are of their father, the devil. I will allow some things to happen so that you are protected. The Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. He will establish us and keep us from evil. The Lord is faithful. I need us to hear this today. The protection is in the rejection. The protection is in the rejection. I'm sorry. I don't know why the screen is not... good all right can everybody see this okay it says i'm sharing but i don't know why it's not sharing it's sharing okay i couldn't see okay all righty all righty god is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil i'm hammering on this for a reason because just like you would separate your child from evil and wickedness, from evil friends that mean them no good, from evil influences that will cause them harm when they can't even see it themselves. God does us the same way. He separates us. And sometimes in the midst of our snots and our cries and our, and our hurt and our pain, we got to recognize and rejoice that God loves us enough to cause the rejection. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. All things are working for your good. Even those who reject us and walk away, stop crying over who rejects you. 
when it may very well be God doing the separating. We have to look at it as God hiding us. God hides us. When they were looking to kill the firstborn, they took Moses and put him in a basket and flew him upstream. And he went into an unfamiliar place. God was hiding. God hid Jesus. He was born in a manger. And if you think about that, he was born amongst the animals because he was the lamb of God. Oh, somebody don't catch that. He was the lamb of God. The next time he comes, he's not coming as lamb. He's coming as lion of Judah. He coming with his sword. He coming with all of us. I tell people, I'll be back. That, that, that Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't the first one to coin that phrase. It was Jesus. He said, I will be back in the name of Jesus. And so we will be back with him with glorified bodies. The whole world will foolishly think that they can wage war against God. And God would one speak one word of his mouth. Everybody's got to bow. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. See, it's, see the time now is to, 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 to bow and to confess Jesus. When you are forced to, it's too late. That means that you are already condemned. All things are working together for our good. Even those who reject us. There's a hiding place. Just like our parents would say, no, nah, I don't have a good feeling about that person. No, nah, you can't go to that party. No, nah, you can't be with them. We don't understand. It hurts us in the moment. But then when we look back, when we're mature enough, we'll say, mama kept me from evil. Daddy kept me from evil. You know what? They kept me from evil. The man or woman of God kept me from evil. We have to see it like that and understand that it is our protection. That is your word today. That whether it's the world, whether it's family, whether it's loved ones, I don't care how long you've known the person. When God does the separating, when God allows the rejection to take place, you have to put yourself in the position of God as a loving father and understand just as you would lovingly uh, keep kids, keep your loved one, keep your child, your niece, your nephew, your grandchildren from evil influence, from people who would do them hurt, harm, or danger. How much more a loving father? So we're going to pray and then I'm going to allow uh, Shante to do some announcements. Father God, we just thank you today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord God, that your re allowing rejection, Lord God, is your protection for us, Lord God. Allowing us to see, Lord God, that we are to prioritize our relationships in you, Lord God. That, Lord, that you sit sovereign, that you sit high above the circle of the earth. Lord God, that you sit high and look low, Lord God. That there's nothing, Lord God, that you don't know. You're all knowing, you're all powerful, you're all seeing, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God, all that you do in our lives. We're expected, Lord God. We thank you right now, Father. I pray for those that, that, that not be only hearers of the word, but doers of the word, to be excited and encouraged, Lord God. That when people walk away from you, that when people unfollow you, that when, when people <coughs> start talking all matter of evil against you, that it is God that is doing the revealing to you of who they really are. We thank you today for that revelation. We thank you, God, for that protection. We love you. We honor you. We magnify you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we seal this prayer. And all the God's people say, amen. Oh, well. <clears throat> If you're willing to give online, you can go to our uh, website or you can go to Cash App. Mm -hmm. She was just saying if you're willing, if you desire to give, you can give online website we probably got to put our our p.o box up there next week so that people know where to send p.o box <clears throat> i'll chime in on this this is prison ministry uh it's it's going well uh yesterday um let's feedback 
yesterday we had the blessed opportunity. Uh, God, God just, God is always connecting uh, us. Is and, and, and that goes back to the rejection and protection type mode uh, where we were able to meet with one of uh, Maverick City uh, music producer who I'm now personal connected to uh at a local church here uh they had an they had a huge event there yesterday i was invited uh we we were there for a good part of the day didn't didn't go later that evening we were invited to hang out with 1k few and some of the other uh rappers or whatnot but uh i just i have those connections in there we talked about all things that pertains to prison ministry how i'm going to bring some of these artists in to the facilities and, and network and and just all things that pertains to uh, furthering the gospel inside of the institutions. The brother at the bottom is a local uh, rapper. Uh, his name's E.I. There were so many there. Uh, I talk with uh, the gentleman in the hat is the is uh, Scott Free. Imagine that play on words. But uh, he's 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 connected with all of these uh musicians and rappers and things of that nature uh they brought Kirk Franklin and Maverick City to a prison in the Everglades where they pretty much recorded an entire album they were there that day uh yesterday and they were inviting us to just come hang out and we did for a little bit and we talked at length but uh it's just awesome what God is doing uh in behind the walls we were there last uh on Friday with the women uh, and a young lady gave her life to the Lord uh, about 70 plus women came to the altar for prayer at the Florida Women's Reception Center keep Charlene in prayer she just gave her life to the Lord uh, at that time and so just wonderful awesome 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 things happening in the Lord and God is definitely expanding and enlarging our territory in uh, that realm um, on Friday, October the 21st, which is a couple of weeks from now, uh, really um, spread the word, spread the word. We're having prison ministry free training. Uh, that's for local churches, pastors, and everyone invited. I'm going to be giving out a training on how to uh, be a minister of the word of God. Uh, in in the prison, how to um, hold on one second. Let me mute this here. Um, how to get approved to go inside of the prisons, uh, and how to once they're approved to go in and teach uh, the Prison Fellowship Academy, which is a year long. So I'm going to be a double double duty as far as teaching. It's free. Going to be from six thirty to eight thirty. It's going to be an awesome time. Uh, everyone is invited. I've had several pastors tell me that they're wanting to come along with other people who are desiring to uh, get involved in prison ministry. Uh, and those are just some photos of those who are incarcerated. It's going to be at 200 West uh, Waters Avenue in Tampa uh, at the Sunshine Health Building. Probably have some refreshments there for those who are in attendance. So that move there. <clears throat> my book, um, my evil twin, understanding the war between flesh and spirit, is available on a number of platforms: Lulu, um, Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million, you name it. It's available. One of the things that really, really blessed me was when we went into the women's facility. On Friday, there was a young lady uh, who a friend of hers had purchased the book online uh, and she had it. She wanted me to sign it. I said, OK, I'll definitely sign uh, the book and be an encouragement to them. Uh, but she was telling me that she had read through it and how it had helped her tremendously. I actually brought a book that in that night and donated it uh, to the chapel so that the women there, other women could have, you know, the book access to it because it teaches you what happens after you're born again. And I think a lot of times people don't understand what is happening when they're born again, uh, how that they're literally in a war between their flesh and their spirit and how to overcome that understanding is half the battle. Um, 
Wednesday night Bible study and prayer. Prayer, uh, really, it's Bible study at 7:30. Uh, we were gathering. Once we get our new location, we'll be ramping up the prayer again at 6:30. But Bible study is at 7:30. Same Bible, same link. Uh, we'll be having there. Uh, and so at this time, Shante is going to uh, close us out in prayer. Just a moment. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word that went forth today, Father. We are so grateful to you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins and help us, Lord, to continue to stay on your path and do your will. We love you. We honor you, Lord. We, we just thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for your hedge of protection. And Lord, when the enemy presents himself uh, we we are so grateful that you brag on us, Father. We don't want to let you down by giving the devil glory. So we're just uh, asking you to help us, give us strength to continue to to do what the do your will, Father. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We love you and we honor you. We bless you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord willing, we'll see you on Wednesday night. Everyone have a blessed weekend. Thank you for joining us. Take that word with you. Remember, God's allowing someone to reject you is his protection. Rejection is God's protection. God bless you all. Have a blessed weekend.